Alright, um, so I've been paying close attention to the Share Your Poetry via video via internet forum or category or whatever it is, and um, I've really been impressed um, with the quality of readings and uh, just the whole idea. I just, I think it's so important and um, I do not read my work out and I wish I did. I, I don't really live in, an, in a community, at least immediately, where um, I have uh, a place to read it. Um, so, and that's my own failing. I certainly should investigate. But all of that is to say that I, I um, really admire what everyone's doing on this site generally, but also with regard to this specific forum. I think it's really important. I think um, the exploration of language, not just on paper, but, but verbally as well, is just such a valuable um, thing. And uh, it's one of the really important things that, I, uh, that poetry offers. Um, so I should stop talking because I tend to be verbose, um, particularly when talking about my ideas. Uh, so, I'm going to read three poems. I'm reading them together because I feel that um, they they come from the same place in my mind, psyche, um, emotional life. Um, they're all sort of studies of violence, or different kinds of violence, different, different, um, different ways of perceiving and conceiving of that violence. So here goes. I'm going to start with um, We Are Cannibals Never Satisfied, which I'm currently workshopping. Um, I appreciate all the help you've gotten on it. It's uh, certainly not done. I don't know that I will ever be to the place where I feel that my poems are done, and um, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Um, but thanks for all the help that has been given, um, and I will continue to workshop it, but I um, wanted to kind of feel it out uh, verbally. So, <clears throat> we are cannibals, never satisfied. Early spring, brown grass greening. Over it runs a chipmunk, open mouth closed around the head of a sparrow. The blood-wet feathers leave the grass a different color. Frayed flesh of fish eating other fish, a world ended by hunger, and cool, clear of aquatic blood dirtying the waters. What good does it do to speak of it? Somewhere, very far from here, a girl bleeds, head wound, her dark eyes, her hunger for the blood of the monster from whose mouth she dangles her birth, her groping for recompense. I would like to say that I stick to white meat, <clears throat> but occasionally <clears throat> the blood bids me come. In the rain, the chickens fed on the weakest one, preferring flesh to weeds. Blood wets the throats that swallow what dry dreams there are of sati satiation. We find only paucity or surfeit in the flesh of our own. The mud held her gently as she sank her ragged neck to an earth, waiting to swallow her suffering. Everything is hunger. Open wound, open mouth, endless red of want. <clears throat> Alright, um, the next one I'm going to read is called Allegory, um, sort of, I mean, I don't think that should really be the title because it's kind of a big concept and this poem is very small and I also, I don't think this poem is strong enough to bear the weight of such a huge word. Um, but anyway, uh, the working title is Allegory. Um, okay. Allegory. The children laugh like snow trickles through seams in the shingles to bruise the flesh of sealing skin from without to within to beneath. After hours of building, 
the roof implodes. The smallest child snowman explodes as scatter children, snow, spackle, drywall, trails of white, like lines of chalk, trace our cruelty, how it starts slow, gains weight, breaks through. So I, I don't know why I've been writing poems about cannibalism and violence. Um, of course, it's all metaphorical, but I still don't really know where it's coming from, but it's an interesting uh, phenomenon. So now I'm going to read a poem I wrote quite a while ago um, that I would say came from the same place, or maybe it was the beginning of these um, more violent meditative poems. Um, and um, in it is some more chicken imagery uh, for various reasons. That's kind of worked itself into my consciousness, so um, there will probably be a lot, a lot of chickens in my poems to come as well. Um, they're just interesting creatures to watch, and unfortunately, I've sort of gotten roped into taking care of them at various times. But that's that's either a story or a poem or an entire autobiography that I really shouldn't indulge myself in sharing with you now. Okay, <clears throat> this is called Where Rules Break, and I think I said I workshopped it before. Um, I'm, again, not sure if it's done. I, I'm not sure if anything's ever done. This is closer to done than the cannibalism poem is. Um, but, uh, I don't know why I'm giving you disclaimers. I'm sorry. I'll stop. Okay. Where rules break. She kills it every day. I swear I've seen her wrap it in a black trash bag, tie it up, select the heaviest stones, throw it off a pier. It struggles and writhes and somehow emerges, bloody wings, unalterable hope, tenacity, and unrelinquishing. She looks for signs that his is dormant, not dead, an unexpected text message, his tears and snot still staining the shoulder of her winter coat, the hard goodbyes his drinking, his loneliness. <clears throat> I want to tell her. Sometimes the traffic light is green because it's broken and you go and crash and never see the terror in the other driver's eyes. Sometimes patterns are arbitrary. It wasn't his face in the clouds. Fate is a patient behind barred windows folding and refolding a map until the disconnecting and reconnecting roots seem divine in their strangeness. My friend, eating raisins, looked down at his hand where the second portion was poured. The first was gone, he said, swimming around in my stomach, and saw maggots crawling in the shriveled fruit. It's not always an apple. And don't that just beat all? Beat it to a bloody pulp until there's nothing left of the symbol on which we've relied. We're language splinters. We look to image. Where image cracks, we're left with action. And here, you might say, a chicken with its head cut off. But I cut a chicken's hot head off once. It didn't run. It flapped its broken wings and made sad shapes in the dirt. Okay, so those were my weird um, meditation on violence poems. Um, and thanks for listening. There might be more in the future. Maybe not, because this is a really weird phenomenon to be talking to myself on a screen, because I can see myself, so it makes it even stranger and more like meta. Plus, I can see my room, and I really appreciate the vision of my room in this little box sitting before me, but when I'm actually myself in my room, not observing myself in my room, it's not nearly as pleasant. It's funny. It's funny how we can't seem to appreciate things as they are when they are.